You take I care. Sent you, uh, I sent you the information. The Hi, Wyatt. Uh, on, uh, Hello, on your how phone, are you guys? You know. Oh, Damn, I've been okay. stabbed in Polito yet? You good? I've not been stabbed in Polito yet, but I've okay, had people good. stabbed in Polito. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, what? Are you organizing like, it? Are you no, the PP? Like, I've had like three or four people come to me that cut wood oh, for okay. me. They're like, oh, I got stabbed. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, First, uh, congrats, you know. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I could not have done that without the Lumber Union. Um, you know, we, yeah, did we get over 100 votes over the competition? Absolutely. But 100 votes, that was the difference between, you know, you know, y'all and, like, another crew voting. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so. Yeah, I made it a, uh, I made it a thing for anybody that was selling or anybody that did any business with us to kind of. Put the word out. Um, I mean, I could have advertised it on Twitter all day. My my whole thing, word of mouth advertising is the best advertising. So I just had uh, anybody that worked with us kind of reach out to anybody we dealt with. So, mm, hell yeah! All right. Um, I sent Tilly uh, a link to. Um are like a mock-up or it's like a copy of what our our sales entry kind of looks mm -hmm. like could you yell by the way yeah um of what our sales entries looks like i was gonna kind of show you just a couple of things um just because the, the lumber company we touch every industry um hunting with the fur materials lumber we we touch it all and, and for a long time, you know, we, we tried to keep people doing these jobs by paying them wages more than what they would get paid at these jobs to kind of make it a little bit more fruit for them, fruitful for them in the time that they're doing it. Um, one in particular that I, I've still yet to, to land is people doing hunting. We, um, I think the guy up there pays you like $32 per boxed fur. You pay a hundred just to, to, to try to make it worth it uh, for people that, that want to go up there and do it. It's just people. I, I don't, I don't know. I know. I know. Your volume went to 12 to a hundred percent other than offer. I know that got loud real quick. Kind of do these jobs. Cause all of our furniture relies on it. The like sofa, um, bed like rugs like you know it all relies on fur and what i was wait kind of what you wait is, it, you know, wait, when you say it relies on fur you throw it you putting it on the bench yeah yeah it does what wait what the fuck i had no idea yeah so i thought you were just trying to be like you know you know some specialty lumber union oh, only like, beds like bougie yeah, oh, no. we we use everything. So uh, when it, when it comes what to the fuck? having to get the things that we need just to provide, like a bed, like it it touches every single, almost every single job apart from like towing and and group civics that have you know zero to do with it. But like for those like blue collar jobs and in the industries that. Like our material based, like we we have to deal with all of that just so we can make a piece of furniture. And so, you know, it, it, there's been ups and downs with it. It it's not easy. It, I I argue all the time that you know running this furniture business is probably one of the hardest jobs that you could do in the city, just because of how much that it takes, um, and how much like focus that you have to give to it uh just to, to to fill an order like we had um a 25 crate large crate order this past week um jesus christ on what was it friday it got put on put in friday morning i, I was able to rally the troops and we was able to get it done saturday morning but it's even that 25 piece order is, you know, 
Almost Davey, thank you the fresh sub. Some of the orders that these people put in because it can go. From, oh yeah, by the way, guys, you know, check your subs, boys. To check your prime. Check your free sub. Pieces yeah, easily. Yeah. We're refurnishing an entire home, and you know, wanting to get people these these pieces in a in a very timely manner, so they're not waiting two weeks, or you know, having to go do it themselves. Really, what we sell is convenience because nobody wants to do this shit. If we're going to be completely honest, mm. and I, I don't mind to do it. Uh, I mean, it, we make good money, but we also reinvest that money into like a, a lot of the like community. Like we had the event space that we threw. Uh, your rally I love for. that thing. That, that was such a yeah. amazingly set up spot. So we we had that space and we ran a few events for it. Um, and you know, the service that we offered was. You know, you get with Diva, she, you tell her exactly how you want it and was kind of wanting to set up personalized events to where it wasn't something that was kind of reused every time. It was a new experience every time you walked into those doors. Mm. And, you know, over time, it as the as a business grows, we can't, you know, do that at that space anymore. You know, we're looking for a new space to do it. That way it can be solely, you know, for those events. But it, it, it was important to me and the Lumber Co. to kind of use that space as not just for us, but for for everybody. I mean, it's a lot of space. There's there's a lot going on there, but it would be wasted if, you know, we wasn't throwing events or we wasn't having people come in and kind of do what it is, you know, they want to do with that space and kind of give it that personal touch to make it special. And um, I think, I mean, I, I did the numbers because I want to kind of wanted to present some things with lumber. But after what I talked to you about the other day, with how lumber is supposed to be done, I, I think it, it kind of evens out. And there's not much that needs to, that we need in terms of making it better. It's just, well, we just have to pay people to do it, which is, completely fine i mean like i said that's a supply chain issue that i gotta figure out but i do know one thing that for lumber it, it, it's a completely like civilian driven economy in the sense of you don't get paid for the job like let's say you go do sanitation you get a paycheck of like a thousand twelve hundred dollars just for doing the job on top of getting materials. Uh, that used to be the case. Is it not anymore? No, we've uh, temporarily reduced it, but mostly oh, for yeah, testing. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because that, that was one thing. I mean, the, the only thing that I can think of to entice people to kind of do these jobs is more money, but, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because mm. I don't want to pay, you know, super premium prices because then I've got to raise prices for the furniture, and I don't want yep. to be that person that, is you know gouging and people paying you know all of their money just to furnish their home like it's that i don't believe in that it should never be something where you're paying two to three times more than what you paid for the home just to put furniture in it mm. so like even with like let's take high quality lumber for example it sells for like twelve hundred fifteen hundred dollars per plank right now I don't charge that. Um, I don't buy it from people because I feel like if you're going you're gonna to sell it, you'll sell it for the highest price. I'd rather just kind of go get it for myself because if I paid that $1,500 per, that raises all the high quality furniture, storage crates, everything out the fucking roof. Yeah. In terms of high quality is 1500 now? Yeah, people are selling it for that. As as Whoa. low as eight, as high as fifteen. Yeah. Wait yeah. for a plank. A for single a plank. plank. A single plank. Oh my right. god! Yeah. It's the it's, unicorn. It's, but it's yeah, it's really hard to get. You have to think of the process of it too, because when it comes what to going the up in that fuck? Forest, you know, there's there's not much incentive to be the highest standing with Axel. You get access to a better axe. Like he gives you sharper things to do the job with. Anybody can come up there and get the same thing that a higher 
standing lumberjack can get with a basic ax. Like they can go get a high quality tree. They can go and you'll have people that will go up there and kind of sit on these trees um, and, and only go around and cutting it with every ground, not really, you know, up there for, you know, the other lumber, other lumber, just looking out for the high quality trees. And even with, with finding those, you know, it takes about, you know, an, an hour and a half, hour 45 for a tree to mature once you plant it. So you have to sit there if you want to keep that tree. Otherwise, somebody will come in and sit on it. And then it becomes like a hostile type interaction because you got people that are, you know, fighting for these trees because, you know, a single plank makes so much money. You know, they need it for farming. They need it for this. They need it for that. It becomes like me sitting there for an hour and a half waiting for this tree to grow thinking you know i can get pulled up on any moment by somebody that may may need this wood too and get shot and killed for a fucking tree this doesn't make sense to me yeah i i someone has told me like those trees are like worth 120 150 thousand dollars mm -hmm. holy you fuck that is more worth stealing than anything else in the city yeah that's why when i find one i call people i literally have like a convoy of three four cars holy the fuck train. yeah what the fuck i mean why, why it's right people do get rolled up on for those trees but i mean e even with like let's say let's say that um i get one of those trees and that's like oh. Like a hundred and twenty-five planks, something like that. Um, if you're able to get the whole tree, that that can last us anywhere from you know two to three days in terms of furniture, like putting high quality furniture together, storage crates. There's a lot of different things that require it, and um, you know sometimes it can throw, kind of throw a wrench in, in, in a bottleneck into the business. I don't, I don't. It's not a that much of a big deal to me because you, you can always find them. It's just depends on luck and how much time you spend up there. There's days I'll have to spend eight hours up in that forest looking for a tree to get one. And then on top of that eight hours, I have to sit for another hour and 30 minutes just to wait for it to be cut down. Like it could be, um, it can be draining at times, but I, I don't give like, I'm not one to to bitch and complain about the process. I'm I very much instill in the lumber company. I don't care how X gets solved, just solve it. Like it, it's it's one of those things where you know we've been in the business and done it this long that I don't want anybody from the company or from my company to you know complain about you know X Y and Z because it's got to be done anyway. So there, you're you're taking more time complaining than you are to just go do it, if that makes sense. So I, I don't know if lumber. Can I am be fucking dude. Ways that's insane. It, uh, better other than you know paying more per plank, but it's um. I think it's been like that since the beginning. I remember with the the previous administrator uh, administration, man, they promised X, Y, and Z. And was like, oh, yeah, we'll make it better for you. We'll make it better for you. And, you know, none of that shit ever happened to the point where, you know, I had to have that mentality of I got to do this myself, just figure it out. But um, I, I think the, the main thing right now is finding people to to do hunting and get fur. That's a, so, a huge bottleneck. Transparently, a um. So I, I think it's worth pointing out now um, is Lumba is probably a joint uh, thing that me and Andy need to uh, discuss. Um, someone told me that the Lumba slider actually breaks your that equipment. Was me. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. If, uh, are you able to speak more to that? Yeah. I've, oh. Um, yeah, sorry. So the first time Max did that, um, the trees were giving 20 plus logs 
And at that point, they were so too heavy to even pick up. So what I did is I asked Axel if he could um, make the logs a bit lighter. He, he then did that, and it still didn't matter because when no. you put it into the pallets and you process it, you still get the <laughs> same amount of um, planks back. So it really, really did not matter how they much are heavy, logs a tree but gives you, you when the end result actually is still pick the exact it up. same. So the slider just helped nothing. Yeah, so like when it, when it comes to the math on that, like let's say a, a lumberjack has six pallets. Each one of those pallets hold 80 planks. Um, I think per tree right now you get 25 logs. The initial cut, you get four logs, but you can't carry it. Yep. Yeah, so you end up dropping heavy. it on the ground and you pick it up. So I can't even get... pick it up. Like mine yeah. drops on the ground and disappears into the void. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know yeah. what the why that is, but sometimes with my friends, they can pick it up and it, you know, they can actually they can see them and sometimes I just can't. Yeah. So it, at most you get like if you run into that issue, you get 21, 21. Yeah. 21 which fits you can fit 21 in a pallet. And when you process that pallet, you get what 100 and 510 planks you can only carry 80 of those planks so then you end up having to drop those other you know 30 planks on on the ground or like making up for it in terms of uh, like an extra pallet or something like that but you can only really do about 480 planks a run takes about Bro, this uh, is insane. Depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for like low quality wood, you can find that shit littered on the ground everywhere. Um, when it comes to basic, everybody wants basic because there's, you know, a million things that require it. So, you, you know, you'll have, you know, one or two basic trees here and there. If you're lucky to, to get a full run of basic and get that 400, I mean, it could take upwards of about two hours just to find that. That's 480 planks. And that 480 planks of basic, I will go through that in less than 30 minutes making furniture. Oh my God. Yep. So it is like, let's say a large crate, like those 25 large crates. That's 80 planks of low and 80 planks of basic quality wood. We did 25 of those. We needed somewhere, I think the number was like. Thank you, Hive. Thank you. And a total amount of wood. About four forty five hundred ish for that entire thing. Um and finding people to do those four hundred and eighty planks. It's actually probably more than that. Because it's one sixty times twenty five. So about eight thousand planks. No, no, four thousand planks, that's right. But um Getting people... Would you agree? Would you agree, Wyatt? Sorry, that the worst part of it is spending about, you know, less time processing and chopping, and then double the time driving down to the docks. Driving down to the—that's the worst part of the whole process. Yeah. Because I've replaced the engine in my Bison three times because of having Ooh. to drive all the way down there. And then let's say that you don't even have somebody to sell that wood to, you have to drive all the way back up to Polito just to sell it for 2 to $3 a plank. Oh. So anybody, that's, anybody that's not selling it to, let's say, myself or Sebastian Walgreen, which is another lumberjack that's in the trade, like if you're not selling to one of us, you're taking that wood down to the docks and then back up to it's Polito. It's not even worth your time. Yeah. It's not. The fuel, it's not the repairs, everything. It. Yeah. Because at 15 a plank, like let's say you take that 480 – and sell it to me i pay 15 dollars a plank no matter what it is except high quality i'll pay a little more if i'm in the market and i need it i pay 15 dollars a plank no matter what it is if you take 480 planks to me that's 7200 dollars. have you ever been robbed at the docks no okay good um i remember way back in the day that was a thing yeah it was like in the beginning of yeah. lumbering yeah but that $7,200, like, let's say you sell that 480 planks to Axel for $3. 
that's fourteen hundred dollars for two hours of work and then driving all the way down to the docks and back up like it's not it's not worth it at all it's not it's not even remotely close to what you can get at other jobs that's why people don't do it yeah i was gonna say the only people doing that don't know any better basically yeah and so if we do find those people like I, I instill like I will buy every single plank that you have yep. if you're willing to be up here to do it for fifteen dollars a plank so you can actually make money doing it and make it worth your time. Like, so not even have them come work for us, like, bro. We have that's whole insane. Area in our dedicated to lumberjacks, we give yeah. all lumberjacks a key, where they can only get into that location to put wood in there. We gave them you know, a bench that has um, pallet blueprints so they can make pallets if they need pallets. We gave them, you know, better axes, something something to incentivize. These Wait, better to, axes? To actually want to do it. What and, the you know, fuck? Have, Wait, this like, is in the server? Seven or eight that off and on, you know, do, do lumber. But, you know, it you can only do so much because it's such a mindless job, especially if you're doing it by yourself. Well, and even then... I, if I could even add further to the, the logistics nightmare that it is to be a lumberjack, not even being able to process your entire load in one run, you know what I mean? Where you, you could basically put three of your pallets in to get cleaned and turned into planks, and you have to go back to the start to do you it all again. You have to do it again. The, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going up and down from uh, the lumber yard just to finish a load of planks. It's, it's mind-numbing. There's no better way to describe it. It's fucking mind-numbing. I remember there was there was something that was mentioned a long time ago that I think would add a. a kind you can of get an adamant and mithril axe. Wait, I don't know if you're the, trolling. Um, grime workers, how they are able to get their packers in those big trucks. It would be game changing if we as lumberjacks or the lumber company could get with grime workers that are that high rep. They get the packers to be able yeah. to see if they could put those pallets in the back of their packers. Are you able have... to? No. no. I really you fuck with that put, idea. You can only put grind packages in the grind trucks. Crimson, they're the four months. Do, like realistically, is park that grind truck up at the the lumber mill, right? And fill it up like let's say you you know you have a group you rent the truck out and then have a grime worker come pick that up drive it down to the the docks you know you kind of just make it worth their while in terms of paying them it would be so much better in terms of getting mass amount of woods to a place that it needs to go instead of taking you know 17 trips with a bison I, like i'd it, almost argue that like it, it should be more like goober where you as the lumberjack can put in an order to have something picked up and then grime workers can yeah the job i i really absolutely good. i mean i i'll even kick it up a notch like uh the, the thing we were talking about earlier about these mm -hmm. requests the contracts mm -hmm. yeah there is a truck that carries lumber yeah it's it's it does some um, it's actually mm -hmm. at, at the at the lumber mode yeah, we, see it on the road up there all the time i, I think I if you were signed in like yeah that thing is sick like can you imagine um you know as you stay signed in in the grime you know poop, someone requests a truck right accepted you drive up there you fucking pick up a ton of this stuff and uh i don't know oh yeah i i think this is a good idea to float can uh why before i uh forget to ask some of this stuff could you write it down like um and uh, we've been asking others in these spaces so that we i mean you're, you're really the only wood company but um we've been asking for these things so that we can collate them and um you know massage it in the way that we think is appropriate and you know send it down the line um especially yeah. how um especially how many times or how much you can process and how many times you how much you have per trip and how many times you have to process it because i think that's very important because you're wasting time every time you do that i, I think it's a huge benefit not only for the lumber company because just for everybody in general 
when it comes to doing these jobs, it, it's definitely, it would definitely help us. And that, and I, I want to be very clear. That I don't know. We have 12 benches. About What's to up? Go but to I think benches. it's in our best interest and, and to at least constantly. garner the information and then see like what happens. Shit cooking in them. Like there's, we must have over six, 700 blueprints and you we're constantly going through, you know, um, you know, furniture, constantly going through wood and different things like that. So being able to set something up to where, you know, people that need that higher volume of wood, like there's an option for that instead of the mindless, you know, driving back and forth with a bison. I mean, we've gotten this far with it, but, you know, it's, I think it's, it's very beneficial and could touch yet another, you know, job and industry in the city. Because I, I think that with how I took over, whenever I took over the lumber company, my whole mission was to employ as many people as I can to compete with the state jobs. I wanted to be a job where somebody could come and work and not have to go and be like, okay, well, I did my two or three orders at the lumber code. Now I have to go run <laughs> a six job just so I can eat. Like I, I, yeah. I, I pay everybody, you know, I, I don't take a wage. I, it's it's very very subtle. I, I everything that I make, I put right back into the company because I would much rather. What a legend! What a legend! Instead of me just you know trying to build you know myself up and buy all these things, it doesn't matter to me. The people that work for me is what matters. To me. The people that buy from us is what matters to me. Mm. So doing whatever I can to make both sides of that spectrum happy, like that's that's my goal. Could I, could I step in quickly? I, mm -hmm. I do want to go back to this this whole idea of the, the, the lumber truck. You know, this really relates to that conversation I told you I had earlier mm -hmm. with someone. Uh, and b basically, the, the driving or the point they were trying to drive home to me was that it would be nice if the jobs had to rely on each other more often. And, and so yeah. the whole idea yeah. of, of uh, y you know, Grime having a lumber truck it might not be the right instance. Like it could make more sense to just give the lumberjacks access to a lumber truck so that they could load up with a larger capacity and go down and finish things. But th the whole concept I, is, is what I love. The idea that it's not just you go from tier one, tier two, tier three of grime doing the exact same thing. And the only thing changes is your vehicle. You know what I mean? Finding ways to make their work different more exciting and potentially more impactful across other jobs i think is is a really important point it gives it a sense of community like where you have to rely on like let's say i want that large bulk order of wood you know i've got to go find a truck driver so to, this is this is it. what i'm thinking maybe it doesn't make sense to have a, a grime worker involved taking it from the lumber yard down to the docks to finish it but maybe you involved a grime worker to deliver the finished planks in large quantities. Stuff like that is is what I would like to see. Because that, you know, that takes a logistical challenge off your hands. Uh, I know it well in the lumber business because I'm constantly driving, dropping planks in people's driveways, unloading them. And let's say it takes me two or three trips to do their entire order. If I could have someone from grime show up with a large vehicle and do the entire thing, a win for everyone to me Agreed. yeah i i'm i'm with that 100 percent. the intraoperability of businesses just a nice and i think um i'm gonna i'm gonna sprinkle something here right um there's there are currently the producers right you are a producer and you are a um manufacturer manufacturer thank you mm -hmm. Um, we, I want to float this with you cause you, uh, I think you'd have some good insight. Um, if there was other manufacturers, would you be interested in, would you be, would you have the capacity to be able to support them as a producer? Are you talking about like in terms of furniture lumber. or lumber? Um, the reason I ask that is a um, uh, thing I'm floating is depending on your business that you are authorized with, perhaps there are some specialty tools that allow you to do more than the average individual. Um, 
specifically what I'm saying is I don't think we should, as uh, uh, the government, say, hey, um, let's take away things uh, and people's freedoms to be able to develop some level of business. But certain businesses, depending on their focus, may be able to get better shit. So as a, um, maybe if your business is a producer of lumber, maybe you got better, better like machines or something that can, you kind of see where I'm going with this? Like, uh, yeah. split it up. And then maybe a manufacturer of furniture may be able to create more because they get extra tools. Right. And, and this would right now, um, this is probably not very specific, the lumber, uh, Wyatt, um, given that you guys kind of do everything because no one does any of it, um, by and large. Um, right now, everything is very single silo, and that is a idea to sort of split the interoperability. So there is a need for one business to require another. I'm down with that. I know in okay. the future, like, we're not there yet, but I, I fully plan on moving Lobo into being a distribution center for smaller mm. furniture places instead of just being the the person to where, you know, we, we sell it all and things like that. Because I think it could probably stimulate even more jobs and businesses for people to open up their own little furniture company, maybe in Toledo or in Sandy or something like that. You know, we can take the convenience and, and time off their hands by being the complete producer of the furniture and then, you know, selling it to them for a heavily discounted price so they can make something on it while selling it place. Just being the, a distribution center. That's the ultimate goal that I want to do. But of course, mm. I mean, that, there's so many moving parts with that. And, and so like, it's not there yet, but I, I have. Right now there's old... the supply problem. Exactly. With lumber. Yeah. If there wasn't, if we didn't have that supply problem with lumber, we 100% we could probably distribute to three or four different furniture places easy. Well, and with, with the supply problem, I, I really want to make it clear that it's a logistics problem too. Like for, for me, as someone who's cutting down logs and then having to find buyers for it, it is a lot of work. Like I, I can give my logs, you know, Seb, I can give my logs to Seb and I can leave all the work to him, but then I'm losing my cut of the money from it. And at the end of the day, really, he's probably just selling most of it to you, Wyatt. So. Oh yeah. I mean. Wait, how are we doing on this? And, and, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, there's weeks where I can go and buy two 2,500 planks from Sebastian a day. And go through every bit of that by midday and still have to find people to buy me wood or to sell me wood just because of the amount of volume that we have and you know how how much how many orders that we get like i i'm not exaggerating we we provide, provide the city with furniture like yeah you know, there, there's i think ash dragon thing of the prime you know, so and you know, when song had this is still insane. Business, there was uh, Nikea, um, you know, these other places. But, you know, when, when we got into it, it, it kind of, you know, took off from there to where no one grinds in this time. It's really pre tsunami huh? to be a lumber company to be known for furniture and known for, you know, all these different things that we do. But. I don't know. There, there's so much that that we go through from the 2,500 planks a day to, you know, 15,000 to 20,000 mats a week. Uh, like so much fur. See, and I, uh, I think if those those upstream logistical challenges are solved, you'll see the materials start coming in a lot quicker. <clears throat> I just need to think about something real quick, but please continue. I don't know. I think the um. The, the bulk moving of, of lumber would be a huge step. Yeah. Um, or, um, Wyatt, yeah. question a bit about another part of your business. Do you guys still um, do a lot of decorating? 
Yeah. So we actually have we actually have a um a company like an umbrella company called Element that's run by Natalia. She mm -hmm. gets decorators and um we give them a heavier discount for uh furniture. That way, you know, these decorators, if they wanted to come do an entire home, you know, there's more incentive for you to reach out to a decorator to decorate your home than doing it yourself because that decorator is going to get a much better discount on bulk furniture because they're doing the entire home. Like um, one of our biggest customers is um, Joseph Arrowhead. He, I mean, he's done a lot of different places within the city. You know, he gets a special discount with us because of, you know, the relationship and how much he gets from us um, with these different places that he that he decorates. So kind of making it more um, enticing for a decorator to work with us uh, is something that we we do a lot of. Um, there was also we're, we're doing a design work soon. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you told me about that the other day. Yeah, the, the uh, like a game show where designers are put head to head to uh, design certain themes with limited uh, resources, kind of test their creativity and different things like that. I'm pretty excited for. We was gonna do it this month, but there's just been so much that's been going on. It's been kind of hard to. Uh, focus on that with them um, the limited amount of properties that um are actually being sold and being um put up do you, do you feel that there's less furniture being sold um and decorated or do you still think it's the exact same it's Have the you... exact same okay. we hit about the same milestone every week okay that's good that's actually really good i was scared at some point that you guys are just gonna hit a plateau because of that so i'm glad it hasn't happened yet yeah, it is um i think a lot of it comes from, you know, a lot of different people coming into the city, especially on the weekends. We do a lot of sales on the weekends. Um, and then throughout the week, it's, you know, we have clientele that comes to us and, you know, people getting mostly large crates. I, we, I, I don't know. I can't tell you how many damn large crates that we've sold. Um, but it's, uh, it, we've done the same amount. Um, for the past like five weeks, I think so. Um, I asked this to every business that comes in. What is your weekly um weekly profit? Uh, I could give you the gross. I don't know the the profits. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, you can give me the gross. About one point one, one point two a week. That's okay. revenue. Um, uh, no, not pure revenue. Uh, that's, I mean, gross revenue, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But after revenue. I pay, like, the warehouse workers, which they get anywhere from 200 to 250 that's split among people, the commission that the salespeople take comes out to around mm -hmm. 200, 250, and then paying out, you know, the other people on top of whatever I have to buy that week for um, for materials. I mean, we're we're profitable. We're in the green. The margins are thin, but you know it, it's one of those things where yeah, it sounds like we do a lot of money a week, like one point. But after it's all spread out and done, like yeah, with, you, have you know to, production yeah. costs and things like that, mm -hmm. we make maybe I would say profit wise, we make probably around two hundred to two fifty a week in profit after all said and done. So like expenditures is like seven fifty something like that. Um. Which is insane, but all right, I'm oh, back. it's in the green, so that's all I care about. Yo, lumber largely, union is kind of fire. Of pricing model, though, right? Like you don't want to pass down all your costs down to the consumer because you want to make your furniture affordable, right? Exactly. I feel like you could make more money, but you're we can easily to. make so much more money. Yeah, because the Wait. demand for furniture. Where else are they going to go? Right. I've thought about that, but I don't want to take advantage of that because I'm not that type of businessman that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. i mean it's not necessarily taking advantage when there's inflation see i heard 
whenever um, somebody had told me that people were, were just making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars a week, like it, I guess it's just a different ball game now than it was oh, three or four months ago. One thousand percent. Yeah. Like so, but I still like. I want to operate in the sense of. Like, I don't want to be too greedy with it. I mean, we do have. I've got mouths to feed, and you know, different things to buy throughout the week. You know, sitting on that's that the cushion problem. Of around two hundred to two fifty a week is good because that fuels like different ventures like. Once another warehouse comes up that we can get for our events, you know, we can do that. Um, any like emergency expenditures, like, you know, the material markets up and down all the time. So, you know, that, that changes kind of leaving a buffer with myself to be able to, you know, buy what we need for the week and not, you know, completely. I'm going to start seeing how people, how many people are signing in. Completely so screw ourselves. On, on warehousing, I asked you a question not too long ago. I think it was at one of Nino's events about uh, lumber storage inside of the warehouse. You said you hadn't placed down 10 yet. Was the limit 10 for you? Yeah, it's 10. So that that is another logistical challenge for you as well. Is yes. It not? That you, you Because we can fill up all 10. Yeah, we can fill up all 10 of those. 625 planks per, which yeah. is however much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah. We could burn through that in a day and a half. So, Easy. Nino, for for your information, any any house I think the... can store ten wood storages, which each holds six hundred and twenty five planks, and a warehouse is subject to that same restriction. So you have this massive building, but you can still place the same number of storages down, which in in Wyatt's case limit the amount of inventory that he could hold, which then further slows production down. So I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I think about this whole picture, and um, because I didn't zoom out, think about the zoomed out picture, um, previously, but <clears throat> what if you stop paying more for lumber? I think someone may have said that, but I just I was thinking about something a minute ago, um, and raise the price of furniture, <clears throat> and that would drive more people to get wood for you. Yeah, we I we started with a small initiative this last week at 15 per, but I think even going a little bit more in like 20 to 25 per probably. Yeah, I'd even do enticing. something like where I we could even help you in the mayor's office. You want to do 20 per? Well, state announce it. Lumber Union is purchasing 20 per this weekend. See what happens. You should be averaging X. I'm going to, and then talk grinder speak. You're going to make 10K an hour or whatever. You know, you give me, how much are they reasonably going to make an hour? I'll, I'll, I'll send it on a stand announcement. And uh, the reason I'm advocating for this is, um, like I said, I came, I missed some of the conversation, but fishing is, uh, is paying out 2 million. A week. Um, I'm very curious. I don't even think I, I, God knows how much per toe is playing out 2.2 million per week. So Jeez. people have money. If they own a house and they got furniture, you know, they got the money to pay. So you, as somebody that requires wood, selling furniture to people that have money if you're not getting enough work up there maybe that move is up the prices yeah okay i uh, give people incentive to go and do it yeah we'd have to do the same thing for fur too i don't mind to do that at all i um I will say, uh, with the fur and the hunting, at least for me, one of the biggest bottlenecks to ever even going up there and doing that is the fact that you have to go up there with a buddy to do hunting. They do not let you go do hunting with less than two people. So that puts a bit of a bottleneck on things on there. But to the point, right? <clears throat> if we work with uh, the lumber union and pick, like, a day 
we could call it, you know, well, first off, this is in Andy's territory, so, but whatever will help anyways, is, you know, um, call it like Lumber Day, Lumber and Fur Day, you know, from this time to this time, the Lumber Union was helping drive community efforts, and they're going to pay this much, which should net roughly this much. And I bet you're going to see a lot of people flood because what's likely happening is the person, people are looking for work. Um, and if they hear, oh, shit, this is going to pay this much money, good shit, you know. If I had more control over the sliders, I'd even rip a lot of jobs and say, hey, let's pump up lumber today, you know, for these next two days. Drive up the price and drive down the price of everything else and send people your way. So all the queues are full. I mean, that might drive up a surf flight plus, and then you, you know, drive the price back down. You could do it like every other, like every other weekend. Yeah. And then like yeah. draw it out. 100%. I, I would be down to do that. And kind of have our regular pricing at 15 per now, but then, well, I probably raise those prices to be honest. So like we could do, um, like raised to like 17 to 20 and then on those days that those you know lumber weekends uh have it like paid for like 30 to 35 and probably get a lot of wood that way yeah and um i i don't know what your finances look like but building up a surplus isn't the end of the world right worst case you get so much, uh, uh, that way you don't like burn out either, like you burn out your entire capital. In the worst case, you end up with more wood than you need for a little bit, but then it's slowed down anyways the next day. And yeah. it's an opportunity to job fair some folks that work during the week. That's true. I think we wanted to host one of those like really soon to get more people to do lumber. Um, and really Chad, I know I'm a genius. The idea of... Doing lumber alone is not efficient, is not the efficient way. Like if you're wanting to really be efficient with it, doing it in in a group, like having dedicated people to these stations and running their own station and people running it. That's how, that's, that is exactly how this job is supposed to be done. I don't think it, you know, uh, people have seen it or have taken advantage of it. Um, but like, let's say every Wednesday we close completely. I shut down the warehouse. We do um, inventory. And we kind of catch ourselves back up, uh, you know, midweek. That way we, we're we not slammed. We catch up on orders, different things like that. Like I told you, we spent that day maybe two hours um, and, and did, you know, X amount of planks, like, uh, an, an astonishing amount of planks in, in that two hours because we had six people doing it and had people dedicated to those mm. those stations and i think that's how personally I, that's how i think it was supposed to be how you're supposed to do that job because you know the um axle allows you to do it and group up with you know six to eight people so I think that the room is there for people to do I just don't think that people take advantage of that because it's a lot easier to get you know more planks in that small amount of time if you're you have a crew doing it instead of just going up there and mindlessly doing it yourself uh, the other thing i realized too is because you as a lumber union know the efficient way as long as you're driving like the new people down there and they're coming to you to sell it now that you have a pitch to like hey if you enjoy this you know what you're bringing a lot of wood in you can hand select who you might continue to pay at a higher rate. In addition to that, if you really like them, they may end up, you know, going to you to work in those six man efficient groups. So I feel like this is worth trying and uh, we'll certainly back uh, it. Yeah. I'm down for, for whatever helps. Like I said, the, the, the volume that we do, I mean, it, it's definitely, we'll even like put the up money there for it. Let's, you know Remember what? That? Let's make it a game. Like, uh, whoever brings the most fur to the lumber union and the most amount of wood wins a prize. 
Oh yeah, we we offer sign on bonuses. Like, um, let's say you're a lumberjack and you find somebody that does lumberjack. If they oh my god, x amount of wood. The lumber games. Uh, yeah, and we uh, we give both a, a bonus to the person that found them and the person that cuts that amount of wood. Like it's um, just whatever we can do to entice people to do it. I know it's not a job a lot of people like to do because there's it's up in Polito, it's far away, kind of have to do it yourself. But at the same time, like it's got potential to be one of the you know better jobs in the city in terms of pay. Just you know the will to do it. All right. Uh, Wyatt, you guys helped us significantly in the campaign. Let's, um, I want to circle back in a couple days. Do give me a list of the things that you think would be good that you need in priority list. And, um, we're gonna, as soon as we get access to the budget, I want to put up some money for, you know, quote unquote, the lumber games. You know what I mean? We'll stay and announce it. We'll make it into a thing where either we could do it individually or as a group, whoever brings the most ends up winning a cash prize. And that way we're subsidizing some of the work. Y'all get a boost in potential employees. Y'all get more wood. And in a way it gets subsidized out anyways. Right. And, and it makes it fun for people. You know what I mean? A fun I'm weekend activity. One more thing, food for thought, if it ever becomes a thing again, um, the DOC and having, let's say, lifers go and cut wood. Um, yeah, that one, I, I don't want to entertain right now. People have brought uh -huh. up lifers and stuff, and I think it's a good idea, but I don't have visibility as to what's going on with the DOC yet as they uh -huh. are uh, state level. Gotcha. That so, yeah. All right. I'm excited for this. I think this is going to be fucking cool, to be honest. And maybe it is actually you guys are operating in Los Santos, so fuck it. You know, we're, we're going to yeah, put I mean, it forward from our budget. I mean, Wyatt's business is very unique because they literally pull from every direction. They touch every job, and then they provide such a unique experience that yeah. uh, I feel like we we should have a say in it. Yep. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. Awesome. Uh, well, I appreciate your guys' time. I don't take yep. up much of it. I'll get some figures and different things written down on paper, and then I'll get it to you in a couple days. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Seems good. Thank you, Wyatt. Take care, All right, guys. Can say what? Oh, my God. I love the name, The Lumber Games. Holy Pretty shit. Good.